I think we're good. Well, we came off a field day. <laughs> it seems like just yesterday. And actually, it wasn't that long ago. Field day was actually, what, June 25th, 26th, whatever. So uh, field day wasn't all that long ago, really, uh, in the grand scheme of things. What, six weeks? Something like that? Seven, six, seven weeks? Well, now we got something else going on. And this is something that, uh, how many of you have ever been a boy, uh, been a scout or a scout leader? Raise your hand. How many folks? Got some folks there in the meeting too? Oh, wow, a lot of us, a lot of us. Uh, I'm still an active scouter. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm an assistant scout master in Troop 17, which uh, was one of the first uh, STEM troops in, in Virginia. I uh, may have been the first STEM troop in Virginia. The troop's over 85 years old. And uh, I've been an assistant scout master there. I used to live in a large state northwest of here. Uh, <laughs> And uh, that's where I began my scouting journey as a Tiger Cub Den leader in 2002 with our oldest son. Uh, I've been a registered scout leader ever since then. So 20 years, give or take. And some of you may be a lot longer than that. I have a friend of mine in a large state northwest of here who's been a registered scout leader for over 50 years steady, uh, which is to me phenomenal. Um, Joda is uh, an outstanding opportunity in many ways for us as an organization. I don't know if this club, uh, I've only been a member of this club since 2016, 2017. I don't know if this club's ever done a Jota before, have we? Yeah, we have. Okay. All right. So so the club has a degree of history of participating uh, in, in Jota. So uh, what I'm hoping to do is so we're going to repeat that, maybe bring it back. Uh, so what I want to do now is just take a few minutes and go over what Joda is, uh, well, how we can participate in it, what some of our options might be, and just a little bit of the, the nuts and bolts of what we're doing. I like to call it planning for success. And yes, if anybody has a background in scouting, you know that patches were super popular when we were kids. And guess what? They still are. Uh, this is the 2021 Joda Jody patch. And we'll talk about what Jody is too. Um, but uh, the 2022 patch is going to be announced in September. So the patch comes out right before, uh, right before the event. Let's see. I will probably just do this. All right. What we're going to talk about is what is Joda? When's it going to happen? Where's it going to happen for us? The first thing you think of when you think of scouts is getting on the radio and operating. So before I even talk about all the other activities there are that we're going to hopefully be able to execute as part of this event, uh, I'd like to talk first about operating uh, and uh, some, some, some ideas of what the environment is like in a, in a Joda event. Uh, and I'm not going to contrast it too much with field day, but uh, you'll get an idea. Another thing is Joda is really an experience. It's not just about scouts on a, on a mic talking to somebody in, in, in Europe. It's really about uh, uh, really the world of ham radio. You know, what, what is it we do? Uh, how many people here spend a lot of time HF contests? Raise your hand. All right, got a couple, okay. How many people are a real sucker for an HF special event? Okay, that's my, that's my weak spot. I, I, I can't stay up all night on a contest, although for field day, I'm a vampire. But, but for, I, I, I'm a sucker for a special event. If I got a chance to talk to a radio room in a battleship, I'm all over that. Honey, we're not going out to dinner. I got to get a hold of this ship. Uh, how many people are into VHF at two meter? You know how much I love it. Uh, <laughs> <Dave. laughs> I'm convinced repeaters are possessed of the devil, <laughs> but uh, uh, the point is there's a lot of talent. I mean, who's in the digital? You know, a lot of you folks are really into digital. Um, my Yesu refuses to transmit on digital, but, uh, but the whole thing is we all have our skill set. We all have our own personal hot buttons, things we really like. You know something I've always wanted to do and I've never done is a fox hunt. 
I always thought that'd be kind of fun. So let's talk about, about the activities we can do as part of Joda. This whole thing is built upon how effective we as a group of men and women can promote this. How can we leverage the contacts we already have, the associations we already have outside of our club, all those connections we have between all of us and all of our experiences here in the community, how can we effectively leverage that to have a really, really good turnout and a really successful event? This whole thing falls apart if we have three scouts show up. Now, God love them. We'll have a great time with those three scouts, but I'd much rather it be more like 50 or 60. So how, how can we effectively do that? All right. So promotion is going to be bigger with this event than probably anything this club's ever done. It really hinges on our ability. Targeting the scout troops, it, counseling. It, right. And we're going to talk about promotion. We're going to talk about each of these in detail. Finally, what's our approach going to be like? And if I have anything to do with it, you kind of know what my approach already is. <laughs> anybody's worked with field day uh, and then finally i'm going to wrap up there's a slide there with some resources for us so about the last time this club actually did you know we had roughly 22 scouts okay parents. so 22 22 scouts and some parents so what where when okay what joda is is jamboree over the air Jamboree over the air, on the air. or on the air. Yeah, I always say over, jamboree on the air. And it's, it's, it's actually the largest scouting event, worldwide event. And most people don't understand that. When you think of a big scouting event, you think of a big in-person world jamboree or national jamboree or something like that. But uh, about jamboree uh, on the air in 2017, had over 1.5 million scouts participate worldwide. So it's big. It's a very big, big thing. So it is the largest scouting event in the world. What's also interesting about this, and this is one of the neat aspects of this, is this is not just a, a, a Boy Scout, you know, grade six through senior year of high school event. Cub Scouts can participate in this. We blow Scouts, Boy Scouts, Scout USA. I uh, don't know if you all are familiar, but right now girls are in Cub Scouts. Girls have Scout troops now. I was at the first girl Scout USA flag ceremony at Camp Shenandoah in the history of that camp. And, and, and girls in Scouting are incredibly... Uh, Incredibly awesome. It's one of the coolest things uh, I've seen in my history in scouting. And that goes back to my when I was in first grade. <laughs> so uh, pretty neat. So we're going to have a big audience here, big participation. The idea is to introduce the scouts to many facets of what we do uh, as, as, as ham radio uh, operators, as radio enthusiasts, as electron chasers. <laughs> Uh, so it, it, it's a great opportunity to expose them, not just to a microphone, but to other aspects of, of what we do and what we enjoy. Now, we did talk about, and I know last time we talked about this, that at least I talked about it, we talked about having this at Stonefield. We also talked about having this at Camp Shenandoah. It turns out a couple things. One, Stonefield is a little tough overnight. In other words, we can't set up something at Stonefield and really leave it set up overnight. Joda begins on a Friday and it stops on a Sunday. Now, we choose when we're available for the event. We can decide not to even have it on Friday and to start Saturday morning. The degree of flexibility that we needed in operating and our scheduling and our setup and the antennas and everything else really led us to sort of eliminate Stonefield. Further, I was excited about having it at Camp Shenandoah. 
Joda is always the third full weekend of October. That's why, remember, you guys always used to laugh at me about field day. I always used to say field day is the third full weekend. of No, it's Joda that's the third full weekend. It's the third full weekend. I always used to get those mixed up. So Earliesville Volunteer Fire Company is the location. And I already got that cleared. We already have the facility. And frankly, y'all remember from field day, we also have a little advantage there as well. Being, <laughs> being we have some uh, lines in trees already. <laughs> so uh, so uh, it's not gonna be a real spiritual experience getting our antennas up. We have already got that covered. Um, and it is going to be, now the calendar's a little wonky because really the first weekend of October starts on a Saturday and a Sunday. They're not counting that Friday. So the way Joda is this year is it is going to be October 14th to 16th. Reason I mention all this is one of the largest camperies in council, Apple Harvest, which we typically set up at. Ed, you're there. Where is Dennis here? No. Dennis oh, Dennis is on. Yeah, Dennis. So, yeah, Larry, you're usually there, right? You, you go. So, so we have a presence already at Apple Harvest. Well, this year, Apple Harvest, just like last year, is going to be at Camp Shenandoah. By the way, there's no apples harvested at Apple Harvest, although they do make cider every year. So, and, uh, and I'm actually participating in helping with Apple Harvest. So, we will have a presence at Apple Harvest, which is one week before Joda weekend. So we have an excellent opportunity. Hundreds of scouts are at Apple Harvest. And the other beauty of Apple Harvest is they're all within our council. So they're all nearby. And with scouts come scout leaders and parents. And so Apple Harvest this year is gonna have a very, very profound impact on the turnout we have the very next weekend right there at the Earliesville Volunteer Fire Company. All right, so that's the schedule. All right, I'm gonna move along a little quicker now, uh, get onto the familiar stuff. Let's talk real quick about operating. I told you I'd talk about operating before I really talked about all the other activities because operating, face it, is the first thing you think about when you think about Joda. Scout in front of a microphone. This event, when it comes to operating, it's about getting them on the air. It's about getting them on the air if they choose to get on the air. We're gonna have a lot of other activities besides just getting on the air. But if they choose to get on the air, we can get them on the air. We want to have the scouts involved heavily in the contact. We want them calling CQ Jamboree or CQ Joda. We're gonna use our club call sign, Whiskey Four Delta Oscar which I hear in my dreams for about three days after field day. <laughs> Solid. Um, we want to be sensitive to using plain English throughout the whole event, unless we preface what we're saying. If we get into cues real heavy, you know, hey, I'm AK4BR, my QTH is Earliesville, QSL. You know, they, they're not going to know what you just said. So... Uh, we, you know, that's fine to introduce them to that, and that's pretty neat, and that's a part of it. But remember, when we're working with scouts uh, operating, we want to, we don't want them to feel they need to learn a new language to key the mic, right? Here's the other thing, and I, I, that's one of the things I ask about c contests, right? Because a lot of times in contests, you're hearing somebody, you know, you pray that they work their signal up to where they're only in the mud. <laughs> oh, what I do for mud, I can pick it out. Uh, here, we want to work strong stations. This is not a contest. We want to work strong stations. Want that scout to be able to hear that other scout on the other end uh, of, of, of the radio. We really want to make sure we have uh, good station safety. You know, we still got this COVID thing going on. We still, there are issues that we want to be careful. We want to make sure, you know, our cables are clean. Remember, we, this has a potential for a lot of traffic. So one of the safety aspects of this thing is we need to be sensitive to uh, where our cables are because there is a potential for a lot of other activities besides just operating going on. Um, FCC regulations apply. 
that almost goes without saying. Uh, the other neat thing about this is sort of like special event stations do. You know how special event stations go. They'll publish something uh, online or in the magazine that says, hey, you know, we're going to be operating at this frequency, and they're never there, but they're close. Well, Joda has a similar thing where uh, for the different, uh, different modes, uh, different uh, frequency in, in the band plan, they have places where they operate. You know, we're gonna we're gonna tend to operate within this range of frequencies, so that makes it a little easier on us, a little easier on the scouts. Um, and here's the really cool part of this, and this is the part I'm most excited about. What do we co focus on mostly on field day? HF, CW, digital points. Where am I at to have the most success? Right. What is this? This is your time if you're into satellite. This is your time if you've been wanting to demonstrate wind link. This is your time uh, if you've got an obscure digital mode you wanna play with. This is your time. Th this is an opportunity where we can expose as many modes as we'd like to, to, to these youth because we wanna keep this interesting. How many stations do you anticipate setting up? That's a good question. How many stations do we anticipate setting up? Here's what's kind of neat about this. Anything in a band plan is fair game. Let me repeat. <laughs> Anything <laughs> in the band plan is fair game. So, uh, it, you, you know, as far as interference goes, we're not going to all be on 40. We're not going to all be on 20 or 80, which basically when you get down to field day, 20, 40, 80. Lather, rinse, repeat. Well, this is different. This is two meter. This is, you know, satellite. Heck, whatever you want to do. There are suggested frequencies for every band. So this is going to be neat. This is going to be fun for us too. You know, if it wasn't fun, we wouldn't be doing it, right? But this is a great public service opportunity and a great way to expose our hobby to a, a new set of fresh young eyes. Again, not a contest. But you'll get bragging rights. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about uh, a little more about some of the activities. And this is the real fun part. And the way I looked at these activities, I started doing this one word thing. You know, you get on a roll when you put together a presentation, build, listen, move, advance, recognize. You know, we, we don't want it to be just here's a chair and here's a microphone. And this is our chance to really say, what, is, what are some of the fun things I'm into that I might want to do? We could build an antenna. You could build a little two meter antenna, right? Just in just a few, you know. 30 minutes probably, hook it up to an HT and bounce off a repeater and go, wow, that was pretty cool. <laughs> we can have that kind of activity. Build a crystal radio. Who has built a crystal radio with an eraser, a safety pin, and a hunk of gravel out of your driveway? I'm it. Are, nobody else has done that? It's in the Cub Scout handbook, Wolf Handbook, 1968. <laughs> I really did that. We lived in Norwalk, Ohio. I built a, I built a crystal radio right out of the Cub Scout handbook using a hunk of crystal, a hunk of quartz I found in my driveway. A cat, you kick her cat whisker. Have you ever heard cat whisker radio? Yeah. Somebody please throw me a bone. And then, and then, and I had a little eraser stuck on the safety pin. I, I built that and that was cool. Um, something simple like a CW key. Remember, we've got all kinds of age groups here. We've got, you know, literally, we got first grade up to senior in high school. You know, that's the potential audience we have here. Even beyond senior, if you look at Venture Scouts. What are some of the things we could do just to have them listen? You know what? Not every scout might want to get on the radio. You know, you might have a huge introvert that just can't handle. I, I have this problem. I can't speak in front of people. Uh, just kidding. <laughs> but, but there are people that would have a hard time 
you know, getting on the radio. You've met people like this, I'm sure, in the time you've been a ham. Oh, I, how do you do that? You know, how do you do that? <laughs> See, there you are. Well, guess what? You might like to listen. You know, we, hey, you know what would excite me? If we just bought a little SDR USB stick, stuck it in a laptop, and just had it listening to other Joda Cusos, and scouts could come and just listen to that. Whatever it takes. You know, wow, what is that? That's all coming through that little that little thing you plugged in your computer. Yeah, with this little wire hanging off of it. That's pretty cool. Are you guys sort of with me on all this? What about short wave? I've got an old Royal 3000, tra Zena, Transoceanic, Royal 3000. Anybody else have an old short wave radio hanging around? Not that old. <laughs> I, I had a, I had a beautiful Royal 7000, but I got rid of it in a large state northwest here. But uh, yeah, what about listening to shortwave? Who still does AMDX? Am I the old? I that is addicting. I don't care who you are. I got a station in Lebanon from Homer, Alaska, on AM from Beirut. I have no idea how on God's green earth that happened. But uh, I was so excited. I woke my Elmer up at two in the morning. I said, Dave, get over here. And uh, Lebanon on AM on a skip in Homer, Alaska, Beirut. So, you know, AM, I didn't listen to here, but AMDX at night's a lot of fun. Uh, moving, what about, how about a fox hunt? Anybody know how to make a QSO on satellite? Anybody ever done it? Anybody ever want to learn? Hey, this is an opportunity for us to learn something new. Set up a wire antenna. How hard would it be? Put an antenna up, something to move around. You know, sometimes kids can't sit there in front of a radio very long. I'm trying to appeal to all the different types of uh, youth that might want to come, right? Uh, what about advancement, scout advancement? Who's a, who has, is now or has been a merit badge counselor? Okay, you're a counselor right now, right? Are you active still? No? Okay, you're, are, are you still a counselor? No, no, no. Not anymore? Okay. Hey, it's a dollar. I think to register, you do your youth protection, YPT, youth protection training now. That's a requirement. Um, right. We did lots of merit badge. Good, uh, good. We didn't call it something merit badge. <laughs> okay. But the point is, you know, we could, be, we, could, uh, we could offer the radio merit badge. Somebody could step up and say, yeah, I'd love to be a merit badge counselor. I'm an I'm a, I'm a, I'm a active counselor for nine different merit badges. Radio is one of them. So uh, being a merit badge counselor is great. You're not attached to any one troop. Uh, merit badge counselor applies through the council. And, and you are a merit badge counselor for any youth within that council. And the way counselors are, are designated is through their scout master. A scout says, hey, I'd like to, like to pursue the radio merit badge. And by the way, you know that badge goes back to 1918? Yep, yeah, they still do. But, but the, the, the radio merit badge, uh, it was actually called wireless wireless radio and it goes back to 1918 it's an old merit badge been around a long time so uh and i can walk you through becoming a merit badge counselor i'm still very active in council and scouting i i i've, I've never stopped I'm a wood badge instructor i've never stopped any of that <laughs> uh, there are other merit badge requirements there's actually uh, a requirement in citizenship in the community merit badge that can be fulfilled uh, at, at a Jota type of event. There are things in the communications merit badge. So there's different merit badge requirements that can be checked off at a Jota event if somebody just simply takes the time and looks. And, and these are all published. You can go online and see for your Jota event, what can we do to assist in advancement? There are even Cub Scout requirements that can be uh, checked off at a Jota event. So advancement's a big deal. And finally, what about recognition? Recognition is huge in scouting. And there are people that are really into patches. My son is one of them. And now he's fulfilled his dream. He has actually developed patches for the Order of the Arrow, Shenandoah Lodge. He developed a conclave patch. He's, my son 
designs patches now, but when he and, and builds them, <laughs> but when he was a puppy, he started collecting them. So now it's pretty cool seeing his patch designs. And like I said, the design for Joda 2022, Joda Jody, J-O-T-I is actually Jamboree on the internet. And that's a whole different thing. And that's not what we're doing here. We're doing Joda. But the patch is shared. So it's a shared patch. So we can look at, do we want to, you know, how do we want to handle patches or participation and that whole sort of thing? No, no, no. But, thank you, though. <laughs> but no, uh, Nash, or actually World, the world of scouting runs Joda. So they will actually, the patch is going to be released in September. Uh, it's a patch we, we, can, we purchased from BSA. But we can talk about that. We haven't, you know, we're not committing to anything. I'm just saying patches and recognition are a big thing. Now, one thing we also have that doesn't cost anything we could do our own certificate if we wanted to. That's totally legit. But there is actually a contact log. So when a scout does sit in front of a radio and, and work digital or whatever, or, or phone, uh, she could make a log of, hey, these are, the, these are the stations I made. These are my QSOs. And we could sign it and authenticate it and the whole bit. And there's, there's a memento from the event. So the, the sky is really the limit for activities. And many of these activities wouldn't really take that long to put together. Really wouldn't take that long to put together. All right, this is the key <laughs> that unlocks the door to a successful event. This has to be seriously within the, the Every one of us, to the best of our ability, uh, needs to come up with you know, the best way we as an individual can work toward promoting this. I see a couple areas. I just, I just put down three areas of promotion. The first one being communications. That's our own club website. That's our own Facebook page. That's our own uh, posters that we could produce and, 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 and put up around town. Uh, Every aspect of this uh, that we as a club can put out, we're going to want to do. Publicity. Do we already have existing connections with uh, radio, television, or newspapers? All right. What are some of the ways we can leverage those existing relationships we have? Yep. Yeah, they have bulletin board of community events. So we all know about different community event boards. So we want to take advantage of those. Uh, if you're part of a social uh, media platform that has an event, uh, some people are into Nextdoor, some are into Facebook, some are into whatever, Facebook groups, whatever, uh, really commit to posting this event. And what we're going to do is, as we get closer to the event, we understand more about what it is we're going to be doing. We're going to start putting those things out, pushing those out, uh, probably within the first week of September. You know, for like a four-week period, be promoting this pretty heavily. Um, scouts, is anybody right now actively involved in a scout unit or council or committees? Okay. Okay. Well. And if anybody on Zoom is, uh, let me know. Send me a send me an email, bobromanko at gmail.com. But um, you know, I am committed to pursuing uh, every possible venue I have within my network of scouting. Uh, you know, I'll be I'm, I plan on going to large troop meetings, pack meetings if necessary. I plan on being at the, uh, the our committee roundtable. Uh, I'm very good friends with the Scott executive uh, at, at the Virginia Headwater Council. I want to make sure this gets in the tributary, the newsletter uh, for scouting. I'm going to make sure it's on the council's website. Uh, I will, uh, yeah, like I mentioned, district roundtables. I attend those already. Um, the har apple harvest, like I mentioned, when apple harvest happens, we really want to have a presence there. When apple harvest is going on, is probably one of the best, best times for us. It's a one, one week before Joda. We we're invited. Uh, I just invited us. Um, we're, <laughs> but we're, uh, 
the idea is that we have the ability to really, really, I can't imagine a better scenario than to have all those scouts there at Apple Harvest. Because Apple Harvest is the only camporee I know of in this whole council that is Cub Scouts through Boy Scouts and World Scouts USA, boy and girl troops. So it, it's, it's, it's literally our entire scout demographic at this one camporee in Camp Shenandoah, and it is heavily attended, okay? We're not putting all our eggs in one basket, but you know what, if you got enough eggs, you could have a big basket. So these are kind of our eggs right here. And if we, uh, if we all really dig deep and focus about what we can do and who we know, uh, even if you have a connection in scouting, uh, you know, maybe your neighbor, you know, is really into, into you know, Cub Scouts or whatever. Uh, th this is the time we, we use everything we have, okay? Order of Arrow. OA. Is anybody OA? I'm Brotherhood member, Shenandoah Lodge. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we, we can uh, leverage OA connections. So there's a, there are a lot of possibilities here. A lot of possibilities. Does anybody have any questions? Now, this is not just me. I mean, I put this together. The, the intent is to kind of brainstorm on these things. This is going to be on our website, this presentation. It'll be in our meeting minutes also. So you know, go back, look at this, think about what are the activities we could be doing? What would I like to do? You know, maybe you've got something I didn't list. You know, Bob, we could build this or do this, you know? So, so look at, uh, I'll tell you another thing that I started doing. Go and uh, look at our magazines, look at QST magazine, go to some of the back issues. And almost every not, I won't say every edition, but many issues of QST Magazine has something that youth are doing. Have y'all picked up on that? Especially lately. So QST has a lot of youth activities that, that make, that are articles that are in the magazine. So maybe go back, look at some of your old issues and look at some of the things that other, uh, th there are issues dedicated to clubs that did Joda. And by the way, Joda is not just clubs, go ahead. Oh, I heard of them. They were very famous for the Scouts and Girl Scouts. The uh, Trail Life was called, and then the American Heritage Girl. Yeah, different company. Yeah, that's different corporations. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, scouting. Yeah, yeah. Well, J Joda is primarily a scout event. Uh, I'm not sure of other organizations participating in it. Um, How are you doing? What's that? Yeah. yeah, I'm wrapping up. Nobody believes me when I say that. So real quick, real quick, here's what our approach is. This is galactically like field day organization. Because <laughs> I really believe that everybody does a little. You know, the way that we have a good field day, everybody does a little. And I think the way that we have a good, uh, a good approach here is everybody does a little. And what I see is the idea of, you know, somebody deciding what area do I feel like I could really help the most in? And what area might I like to be kind of responsible for? In other words, does somebody, would somebody like to handle the operation aspect of this and, and rally up? Okay, we've got somebody that wants to do two meter going to a repeater. We have somebody that wants to do you know, HF, we have somebody that wants to do HF digital. We have somebody that wants to do satellite. We have a, you know, who wants, who might want to um, coordinate that? Who might want to coordinate the activities? Maybe you enjoy uh, educational activities and that sort of thing. Well, you know what? I can, I can, I can, I, I can step up and say, you know, I, I can help, you know, I can own that. One of the big, I think misconceptions that people have is that when you put your name out there, it really means you're doing it. And that's farthest from the truth. All that means is you're owning it. There's a difference between doing something and owning something. And if any of you have ever worked effectively on teams or on projects, you understand the difference. It's all about delegation. And it's all about letting people do what they enjoy doing the most.
And that, that's the way I see this. I assume there's no requirement for us to provide any food. That's that, that again, that, that's something that uh, I could I could put that under facility logistics. And I will tell you this, I will tell you this, we're going to have uh, my five gallon water is going to be there because if it's anything like the temperatures have been, you know, even October, I don't know about this area, jury's out. But, but well, you know, we'll have things like water in there. Uh, I'm willing to do very, I'm willing to do much of this. I'm willing to do the leadership. I'm willing to do all of the outreach uh, and scout to the scouting. I'm willing to own that. I'm willing to own the facility logistics. So I'm willing to do leadership. I'm willing to do a big part of promotion, working directly with scouts and scout organizations and units. I'm willing to work uh, on uh, the facility. I've already got a start on that. So I'm willing to handle a lot of these. What I'd like to do is find somebody who'd be able to work in promotion and work with uh, local media and to work with updating our website and, and, and the Facebook and, and, and the social media. Who'd like to own that piece of it? Who would like to own the operation? Basically just saying, well, what radios are we going to have? What bands do people want to do? What modes are people interested in? And just kind of coordinate that. I'm not saying they're going to do it. They're just going to own it. Activities. Who, who wants to think about what are some of the educational things we can do? What are some of the, you know, could we do a fox hunt? What are some of the, could we chase a satellite? Could we build this? Who can we get to build that? Who can we get to demonstrate? Even if it's just a demonstration of satellite, could we do a fox hunt? Advancement. Who wants to be a, who, who would be considering, uh, maybe we could dig down and put on a radio merit badge program Saturday and Sunday. You could do radio merit badge in two days. All right, who'd like to own that? And by the way, there's PowerPoint presentations and everything already made for it. All you have to do is uh, take your youth protection training about two hours online and register with the council. And I can help you with both of those. Uh, you know, that, that's part of advancement, part of recognition. You know, what, what, who, who wants to print up some certificates maybe? Who wants to handle the QSO logs, whatever? Who wants to handle safety? Who would like to sort of audit the, uh, the setup we have for, for safety. I'm willing to own all the logistics for facility. So don't need any commitment tonight, but the presentation is gonna be up there. And uh, uh, you know, if we don't hear from somebody within a week or two, there might be some vol volunteering going on. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but guys, I think this is really gonna be a lot of fun. And I think, I think the, the, the success of this really depends on, on planning and ownership. You know, we're all big boys and girls. You know, if, if I tell you I own something, I own something, even if I have to set that tent up myself at 1230 uh, off my trailer when it arrives. <laughs> so when I tell you I'm gonna own something, I'm gonna own it and it will get done. And I'm just looking for a few more folks that wanna really participate and helping to pull this off. But uh, I'm extremely excited about it. I'm extremely excited about it. And I think this, this can really be a, a great opportunity. So this is, this is the end, these resources. Uh, this will be part of the presentation. You could click on these. I will tell you this, if you don't do anything, if you wanna see a very good document, whoops, that's not it. <laughs> You know when that happens. If you want to see a really good document, when you get an opportunity, when this is uploaded, click this link right here. That this is the 2021 20, Joda Handbook for youth, for non-hams, and that is one of the best documents I have ever seen. As long as I've been a ham, for the non-ham, that is an incredible document. That would be a great document if you were just teaching a course on ham radio. But that Joda Radio uh, Handbook is amazing. Uh, it blew me away. So if anything, just check it out for yourself. All right, that's it. I am all done. And I thank you.
Excellent. Bob, if you would uh, stop sharing the screen there. I'll stay under two hours. I'm impressed. Don't stop. <laughs> and okay. Everyone has heard the story five times. So I got myself that story in radio. It was summer 1962. I was at Camp Canetta Walk Pack. I have to show my controls. And the first coach was a requirement for second class rank. And there were two brothers who were teaching a Morse code with semaphore flag. And for some reason, I was copying it pretty well. And one of them thought, gee, he's guessing. He's sort of cheating. So the two brothers sent it back and forth in German. And I still had perfect copy. And the older brother was a ham. He invited me to his cabin. A no-no nowadays, right, Bob? Absolutely. But I remember he had an all Heathcote station and he made a couple contacts on AM, but mainly on CW. And I was addicted to ham radio. And I went home and my parents, very good friend, Marv W2 uh, SGA became my mentor. And I've documented this and told this story to many times. But just two weeks ago, I went to a Facebook web page of alumni of Camp Canetta Wapak. And I put out an inquiry, and sure enough, I was able to connect with this counselor, who's still a ham, living in the Portland, Oregon area. So are there any uh, old or new business or questions people want to bring up? And if not, I'll turn it over to Ian. Yeah, so our, our Oh yeah, that's oh yeah, that, yeah, obviously, yeah. No, Jonah is here's the thing I can mention is you know literally tens of thousands of, of hams participated in this. I mean this is huge. Well, who's done a Jota station? Sure. Yeah, I, 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 mean, I have. Uh, now you have to remember certain things. I mean, scouting, uh, I really encourage any of us can can take youth protection training. You don't even have to be a registered scout. Uh, we have parents in the troop that take youth protection training. Who remembers anything about being an adult scout leader? What are some of the rules? Never alone with a scout. You always have too deep leadership. Well, You're, parents yeah, well, our right. Yeah, well, yeah, you, you would not be alone. You would never be alone with a scout. I mean, this is all common sense stuff, but, um, you know, youth protection is taken very seriously by uh, Scouts USA. And uh, they have a, a very good comprehensive online training program for youth protection. Uh, I'm a must report. Is anybody else a must report? Couple? Okay. So uh, youth protection is very important. And I, I would, if you're going to be a merit badge counselor, you have to have youth protection, uh, current youth protection certification. Uh, I, I do it every year. So, um, but yeah, to answer your question, yeah, many, many clubs do this. Many, many individuals do this. Many troops do this. Uh, you know, you might have a, a ham that's, uh, you know, an adult leader or a parent in a troop, and they'll say, hey, we're going to do, you know, we're going to have a little Jota event. So, and it's, the cool thing about this is it's worldwide. If you're into DX, this is literally shooting fish in a barrel <laughs> because everybody wants to talk to everybody and it's not a contest. I, so, <laughs> I got a story about that. We'll talk when I'm not being recorded. But, uh, <laughs> but I can tell you that it's really interesting. Um, it's really interesting. It, it's, it, has anybody worked Jota before? You have, you have, you remember, do you remember? I mean, Jota is pretty neat because you will get countries that you don't hear under normal circumstances and it'll be like, really? Uh, so uh, it's a lot of fun, but that's it. Any other questions? That was a long answer to uh, how many are in there. Yeah. Yeah. But a lot of clubs do it. So I'm excited. I hope, you know.